All right. Thank you very much once again. Uh, today, uh, we are having uh, Maha Mahadum with us, a former host of World This Morning on PTV World, traveler, reader, researcher, and a wonderful uh, human being, of course. She is one of my favorite uh, morning hosts uh, in Pakistani media. Uh, she has worked uh, for five years uh, in Pakistan, highlighted different social issues, uh, connected us with different uh, uh different mu musicians artists uh singers interviewed many people and provided us an opportunity uh to 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 know about their perspective so absolutely delighted to have you maha here uh, thank you very much for joining in how are you no thank you so much for inviting me i'm good thank you um a little nervous actually but i uh, haven't done this for a while normally i'm on i'm normally on your side but today it's uh different but i'm excited it's been a while since I've spoken to people in Pakistan. Yeah. So uh, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for, for joining in. Uh, first thing, how was your experience in Pakistan and um, specifically hosting World This Morning um, for a long period of time? Mm -hmm. That's a really good question. Um, well, my experience in Pakistan was wonderful. Like I had, it was one of the best experiences of my life uh, in the sense that I got to learn a lot. Um, I had the best time in the sense I got to host the show, uh, you know, highlighting the positives uh, of Pakistan, which was really lacking in mainstream media, as I mentioned, in the West and within Pakistan, um, you know, outlets. I also got to travel. I got to see such amazing places, which I probably wouldn't have done if I had just been visiting uh, with family and friends. Um, I got to meet artists. Uh, musicians, you know, producers, journalists, uh, people from all walks of life, some politicians even, you know, it's quite interesting to meet them. Um, but at the same time, the, it was a challenging experience. It was very different um, in the sense that I wasn't in media before I moved to Pakistan. I had a little bit of um, exposure to it, but not too much. However, uh, hosting well this morning was definitely a massive learning curve. It allowed me to do something I was extremely passionate about. And um, yes, it was, uh, it's something I wouldn't change. It had its challenges, definitely, but we'll discuss those later. Um, however, it was, it was great. Perfect, wonderful. Uh, we do have Shafqat Ali with us. She, uh, he's, he's, uh, he's saying that glad to see Maha, ma'am. I used to practice English and listening English. <laughs> watching her oh, that's so great. No, thank you for joining us. No, I'm really glad that I have used to get that feedback that people use the show to practice. And I mean, my English isn't that great, but it was nice that people were able to use it. And also because when you're on live television, sometimes it gets really nerve wracking. So you forget words or you keep repeating yourself. But uh, it was great practice. <laughs> Yeah, but 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 something was really natural about you, and that was uh, you know also attractive for uh, for the viewers as well. That you were being very authentic, very original with your content, with your preparation. Oh, thanks. I tried. Uh, so, Maha, tell us uh, what were the skills which you worked on and improved during this journey, uh, during your, uh, you know, um, during during this, mm. your, your specifically in world this morning or connecting with a lot of participants. Um, I think patience. I may not have practiced it all the time because <laughs> it's quite hard. But um, I think one thing I definitely learned was patience during my time in Pakistan. Um, I think to live in Pakistan, you have to have patience because it is quite challenging um working in an industry which is male dominated as well really um was that uh patience would i mean i went over the question and that's where i keep coming back to the different types of guests you had uh learning how to speak to them um you know understanding their stories so you learn uh, you also empathy, I think, definitely, because um, we say we understand things, but you never truly understand it until you experience it yourself. So I think connecting with all these people. So patience and empathy, I think, are the skills I learned and improved the most. Wonderful. I think my producers would disagree with that, but, <laughs> but yeah. I tried. I 
and and how about how about communication i mean uh, communication is a vital you know skill during uh, showing up appearing on screen so yeah. how about that so you know obviously um i think you said what i worked on and improved um i'm going to sound like a terrible person but i think my communication skills were already quite good <laughs> um because i you have a psychology background i've always interacted with people it's something that i've always relished in but yes um i think yeah communication skills in meeting people with different backgrounds and you know expanding that level of understanding and how to speak to everyone on a different you know platform um and then um you know meeting people who are you know diplomats and politicians and um yeah just yeah communication too i guess but i think that's always been one of my um strengths because i've always enjoyed talking to people as much as it makes me very nervous at times i've really um i enjoy that yeah hmm perfect wonderful and uh, how about you know most of the time it's not always the same that are there bad days for a morning host as well uh, because uh, and how and how do you cope up with that because it's not uh, you know that uh, every, every day is a good day so no of course not um absolutely there are bad days for a morning show host there are be days you walk in and you just want to um shout and scream and you know I don't condone violence but you know you just want to hit things but you control it um but I think for me what I noticed I, when you asked me this question was that there were bad days but as soon as that camera light went on it kind of went away because I was doing what I enjoyed and it, you have to focus so much on the show and pay attention so I think the bad days there were bad days also in the sense because of all you know the different issues or the struggles that you have but for sure like life is continuing for everyone even if you're a sh- more, you know a host or not so definitely had bad days but yeah wonderful That's and uh, I, i'm not going yeah. i, I can't <laughs> And how do, you, how do you, okay okay yeah there are bad days for a morning host so how do you cope up with that i mean um, and just so changing, um, yeah. i was really lucky um my well my um co-host was really supportive shazad he shazad, um yeah. yeah he used to absorb a lot of the frustration and he used to kind of you know because he was so calm so he used to kind of help kind of ease that and then having that support system um because we had a really good working like team working uh you know relationship so it, that's really important having people that you can turn to and then also obviously my parents um used to help you know I used because that that's the thing whenever i get stressed or frustrated I was, i would speak to shazad well he would be in the you know makeup room as well so he would have to be there um and then my producers also tried I, but with i think there's certain people that you kind of push a bit more and they you don't really listen when you're in that uh, mood but um parents and having a support um professional network as well i think so i had that which is odd which is great hmm yeah she said also uh, you know i used to bring a lot of energy into the program with, yeah with yeah i think that's a, and, and a lot of you know, we were very different uh, and i think a lot of people didn't understand the dynamics they used to think that we didn't get on but but actually we had a great working relationship and i think the difference differences in personality brought out you know it it was good it was i really enjoyed yeah. that i missed that so we miss we miss we miss word this morning uh, as well um, because it was something you know informative what? it was uh, inspiring it's meeting still a lot of people it's still there, from... it's still there. Hmm? they're still doing it shazad is still there and he has got the the stamina and patience of uh, you know <laughs> it's incredible he's pushes through keeps going and he's still there doing it which is great okay perfect wonderful so who are like three of your favorite shows and people in world this morning that was a difficult one actually i was really thinking about this i had to write this one down actually so there mm-hmm. was um we used to do ramazan uh specials and yeah. there was this one uh 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 religious um 
commentator that we got on called Dr. Yusuf Raza. I really enjoyed those um, episodes with him because it really, you know, it was really kind of doing what I wanted to do in the sense, showing the religion, showing the country, dialogue, um, interpretation of the religion, um, not the generic um, stuff that's put out there. So I, those, he was a really great guest and he was very good at answering questions and his knowledge was amazing. And I think it was really important to see someone who you may stereotypically assume is quite, you know, maybe one-sided or, you know, you might assume what their religious um, leanings are. But uh, with him, he was, I really enjoyed this. I thought those were extremely educational and uh, enlightening episodes. Um, I think they should be still on YouTube or on Daily Motion. Um, the other person was Samina Big, the lady who climbed Mount Everest and oh. has done all the peaks. She, she's incredible. Um, I mean, how many people have done that? And how many times can you say you met someone who's done that? So very inspiring, um, you know, with her story, the background, you know, the odds she overcame, the support she had. It was, that was really incredible. And the, other one, um, well, I had two more, and I've actually, if you don't mind, I'm just going to check because I've forgotten the name. Um, I forgot to write it down. I'm just going to quickly look um, look it up, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, just bear with me. Meanwhile, you can also, you know, copy the link and uh, put it on your page as well, so we can sure. get... Have you sent it to me, the link? Yeah, um, or... yeah, yeah. Okay. Sure. If you just bear with me, let me just sort this out. Um, take, take it. Apologies. I like, I hate, I should have prepared, I should have written it down. I just ran out of time with all the technical issues I was having this morning. It's it's perfectly um, fine. It's perfectly fine. To you, time. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So we do have uh, people who have joined in. Uh, so if you oh, have great. questions, uh, they can they can comment. And uh, at the end of the show or at the end of this conversation, we will also share a link if you want to join and ask uh, Maha a uh, question directly. So we would welcome that as well. If Maha is OK with that. Thank you, Saddam. Uh, Saddam has just commented that I am seeing Maha for the first time and her energy level deserves applause. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Saddam. Uh, Saddam is one of my best friends. Um, Maha hosted a world this morning. Um, uh, for, like She has been working in Pakistan for five years. Um, today she is with us uh, and we are asking uh, her questions about how was her experience um, in, in this media industry of Pakistan and what what she uh, experienced in, in her own uh, journey, uh, you know, spending uh, time in Pakistan and working on uh, PTV World uh, and hosting that, of course, World This Morning program. So yeah, we got him, we got her back, we got her back. Yeah, just sorry, what, just give me one more second if I can't find it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. All right. I'm gonna give up. Um, but
Oh, yeah. Okay, hold on. I'm almost there. I've almost got her name. Just give me one more second. Thank you, Iram. Uh, Iram has Kamla commented. That's Kamla Bhasan. That's the one. Uh, that was going to bug me. Yeah, Kamla Bhasan. She is an Hi. activist. Um, she came from India. She was one of my um, favorite uh, people to speak to. She was in incredibly intelligent. Um, you know, she's from the from the subcontinent. So she, uh, her insights and her experiences were, it was just amazing. And the final, and I know I've done three, but I'm just going to say one more. I got to meet a lot of my grandfather's students. That was incredible wow. for me. So yeah, that was because uh, he was a uh, vice chancellor of government college. Um, and then he was chancellor of Punjab a college university. Um, and he was, uh, yeah, he was, he did a lot of stuff for education and he was, uh, you know, he founded psychology department in Pakistan. So I got to meet a lot of people. So that was really great. So, yeah, I wow. like to throw that in about my granddad because uh, he, he did a lot for the country as well. Wow. Wonderful. And uh, what about, uh, you know, three things you dislike? Hi, that you also put everyone just joined us. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Go on. All three right. things. So three like. things. Maha really do not maha lot about uh, media industry in Pakistan. Hate hmm. Okay. So I. Th okay. So three things. I it's a hard three one. Things? I know. Uh, no, no, that is not a hard one. It's hard to narrow it down. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I think the three things would be um, the creator jealousy. Okay. So um, unfounded criticism, which isn't constructive. Mm -hmm. And okay. uh, moral judgments. Um, like people feel, you know, these they have the right to judge. However, whatever I've just mentioned, these are universal issues within media or within any, I think, career. Um, however, I found it was because I was there, so obviously that's my experience of it. Um, those are the things I felt like I could do without. I welcome criticism, always have done, but it should be constructive. I don't believe anyone has a right to judge you. Um, and... Creative jealousy, I don't understand why. That, that, I mean, I found that quite rife in Pakistan. That was one of my biggest issues um, because it takes away from the objective and the goal to put out content for the masses or for people who are interested. And I think it's really can be disabling for the industry or, you know, the area that you're in if you don't allow creative differences to arise or allow them to flourish. So those are my, I'm not good at answering questions. I, I keep going and going. <laughs> I need to right. keep it precise. So we, are, we, are, we are really getting what we are, you know, uh, looking for. <laughs> from good. Your experience. Yeah. So good. How, how about uh, three things you wish you could do on TV? Before oh. to. Uh, yeah. So that's a, that was a really good question. These questions are really good. Um, so I would have liked to, I think I could, interpreted this question is slightly differently i would have liked to have my own team that i could have created um with editorial and creative freedom to produce my own show with sufficient oh, wow. resources obviously because that was always one thing the resources uh, were always a bit yeah, yeah hit and miss but, but what sort of show like if you had well i think I would have, well, I would have taken the concept of the morning show that we had and I would have pushed it forward to where I think it could have gone. Um, I think that it kind of got uh, stuck in a way when I was there. I'm, you know, I'm not sure about now, but it got, I would have wanted to expand that. Um, but like, you know, like I did, provide platforms for people who deserve it. So musicians, artists, authors, um, have you know just pleasant 
nice conversations. Yeah, different different opinions, but just a nice something that makes you feel better after you watch it. That's the type of that's what I wish I could continue to do on TV. Wonderful. This is the first one. What about second? Second and third. Oh well, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> I forgot that was only one. Um, what else would I like? Three things I would have done on TV. I would have. There's a lot of traveling, uh, you know, stuff on social media. I would have tried to relay that and uh, create, you know, like David At David Attenborough style documentaries, like nature. I would have one like that for Pakistan, like, but at that level. Um, and I would love to go and explore Pakistan in that depth. Um, so that that's another thing. Uh, Oh, last one. What else would I like to do? That's a tough one. What else would I want to do on TV? Oh, I think um, create more like comedy content. Um, ah, okay. Yeah, I think that is uh, everything's so serious on Pakistani television. Everyone's always fighting about politics or something. Um, so something's always going wrong. So I think I would have added a bit of um, lighthearted. Um, Banter. Yeah, so I think an, a talk show, but like a comedy style or, you know, yeah, I think that would have been fun. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for answering that. Um, how about uh, since you're working as a producer and con uh, content developer as well, so um, in your perspective, five keywords that defines content that works in Pakistan? Oh, yeah, that was a good one. Um, yeah. Okay, so... There's actually the way I we I mean the way I broke this one down was there's two answers for that. There's content that works right now, um, and what should work. I have I have my opinions on that. So at the moment, um, what works on Pakistani or on television or content that works is short termism, like everything's very short term, um, sensational, sensational, sensationalism um bad news bickering and controversy bad, 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 bad and negative, bad news, news, negative yeah negative negative uh, news um okay. and bickering and controversy because whenever okay. i walk these days whenever i walk into the room and my father's watching parks like someone's always shouting or they're all always yeah. shouting and yeah. recently i saw a, the host shouting over the guest and having an argument, that's not, in my opinion, these are just my opinions. Yeah. That's not what you should be doing as a host. You're supposed to mediate it and keep it kind of in control. But but no, that's not to say that there's good stuff out there. There's like some, you know, really amazing, talented people who are doing great work. The, so, And then the second part of my answer for that one, what should work, is... Um, Educated dialogue, artistic expression, creativity. I think we're really lacking creativity. Um, you know, art, history, geopolitics, etc., technology, and then modernity and society. We need to talk about, you know, going forward or what being present now. Um, so I think that 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 could work in Pakistan for sure. Because there's so many talented people there. That's another reason why I stayed for so long, because of, of the potential and this, you know, it's it's amazing, really impressive. Wonderful, thank you. I'll I'll listen to it again, and uh, you know, keeping that in consideration, we'll you know try to create a content. Uh, so thank you ah. for that. Uh, <laughs> so how? Okay. So I have lots question. of opinions. <laughs> Yes. No, that, next the, question. The, the, um, so the next question is risk and vulnerability to appear on screen specifically mm. for a female. Yeah, um, no, it's very risky, um, especially within um, conservative societies. Um, there's immediate judgments that are cast on your personality, on your character. It's quite a tough, it's actually a very tough job. Um, and also being in media, I think, has its own um, 
stigmas attached to it still. I think we've come a long way and I think the women and men in Pakistan are doing amazing, you know, the actors and the, you know, singers and etc. But it's, there's a long way to go still. So there's that, um, you know, you reputationally, socially, futuristically, and even physically can become quite dangerous. We've seen, you know, we've heard, we, you know, in the last few years and in the past, um, the, cons- the consequences um, of being on TV or being a, a media person. So I think it is very risky, but at the same time, it's, it, if you if you enjoy what you're doing, if you believe in what you're doing, it's worth it. And people do need to do that because otherwise you won't really have an industry or people from diverse backgrounds if you just concentrate on the risk. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah. <laughs> quite generically um so what what uh, well it's a generic question i mean there's no uh there's no specific like i mean for me i noticed that you, i mean it's generic but that, those are the things that people go through like so i had people questioning my character my integrity my religion uh, my upbringing um and you know those are risks especially in a society where things are all based on your reputation. You know, your future is based on it. Your children's lives can be affected by it. So, um, you know, oh, you're on, you, you're a media, oh, you host TV, oh, but isn't it really, you know, what type of environments are there? The environment for any work, or it can be good or bad, it depends what you expose yourself to. I mean, I've seen the good and the bad, you know, being in, I've seen things that I'd never seen, even within England, but I've also seen amazing things that I've never seen anywhere in the world. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a generic answer because they're generic issues, I think. Yeah, you're absolutely mm-hmm. right about that. And, um, okay, so next question for you, Maha, is that mm-hmm. uh, what did you learn about Pakistani media uh, after you stepped in? I learned that there is an incredible amount of potential. I think um, that's what I learned. Like, I mean, that that's something to this day I say to everyone. I was like, this opportunity and the potential and the talent within Pakistan is incredible. It's um, almost, um, it still almost hurts me to see, you know, that it doesn't always get the 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 weight or respect that it they deserve um i also learned that um the media it's the private media also ha- i learned that that has a huge impact on people um state media the state channel isn't wasn't at the time when I started as popular. I think it got better. Um, what else did I learn? Well, that's a good question. Mm. I learned that there's a lot of politics and um, on TV there, like a lot. It's too much, um, in my opinion. I think it needs to be balanced out. Um, one second. I wrote something down, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I learned that, yeah, the sensationalism and it's just that everything's a, it's news or politics, news or politics. That's, um, what else did I learn? I learned that, there were people out there who were doing a lot of creative things, um, but that was kind of tending to go onto social media. Um, but at one point in 2016, I hosted a film festival and I got to see incredible movies and I met incredible uh, producers and directors uh, from Pakistan. So I learned that side of uh, Pakistani media as well while I was there. And yeah, I learned about the beauty of Pakistan through the media um, and that some people are really trying to push it out there. 
beauty of people or beauty of places? Both. Both. Yeah. But I was... Pakistan, I learned that the media don't do it justice to its people in the sense that they don't, like you said, the beauty of the people, the hospitality. I mean, everyone talks about the hospitality, but it's so true. The kindness, um, the gentleness that people have. You, you know, we try to do that through the show, and I think we did succeed to a certain level. Um, and I think the movies, I learned that the movies, they brought that out. I don't think the dramas do it. I don't think they uh, give um, the respect that people does I think yeah I also learned that the media doesn't give its viewers the respect that they deserve as much as they deserve it so that's one thing I don't want to be too controversial <laughs> it's I don't want to you know there's a lot of good stuff as well obviously but you're asking me what I learned um but I learned that there's a lot of people um with a lot of talent within the organizations that I had exposure to they just need the resources to kind of put it out there and the creative freedom. Yes. The creative freedom. Potential is there. Impact of private uh, channels is higher than the. Oh yeah. Moment but, one. And that all oh, it man. takes. You can put place in. Yeah, because when I switch on some of the channels here, the colors, sounds, they they're so dated, and it's it doesn't seem it's not it's not modern. And by modern, I don't mean Western or whatever. I'm just saying updated. You have, if you, whatever resource you have, you should be updating it. You don't need to be stuck. Like, you celebrate your past and history by evolving and incorporating that and moving it forward because everything changes. What I've seen here is that the private channels are a lot brighter. They've got a lot more graphics. The other channels are still it's just a bit depressing when you turn it on you're like what is this so um i learned that there's um quite a bit of bureaucracy involved so within the media as well um so you have to get overcome a lot of stuff so i understand why people struggle um as they do but yeah i'm waffling now um but yeah it's um i learned that there's potential within the media to do a lot better yeah wonderful thank you thank you for that um and how about if someone want to you know want to come to this uh, media industry so what what mm -hmm. is the path uh, from your perspective um okay so the things the way to get into media which is in your con which is in one individual's control is um the interest that they have in it how how you know the passion that they have towards it um to be articulate if you i mean it depends what kind of i mean i guess in any form uh, of media career you need to be articulate and then and i hate to say it because when i hear people saying this in interviews it really agitates me but i think luck because i genuinely i was lucky in the fact that i ended up doing the job that i did um and that's not in our control so if someone whoever's watching wants to get into media i think the things that you control is that increase your interest in it increase your knowledge in it um you can also become if you're not already articulate you can practice that you can learn you can learn how to express yourself those courses reading etc and then obviously um you know if you meet someone in the media or if you know someone in media um or if you do something that gets picked up on social media like now what that we're seeing that you know if you create content online um people are watching so it's about creating something that will catch someone's eye maybe it goes viral it doesn't even have to go viral i think it just the quality of it has to be really good but i think you know but then for everything there's um you know there is a God's luck factor, so which is not in our control. So I think um, work oh, sounds really cliche, but you just keep working hard and creating good content and then share. And you know, one thing I genuinely believe this because I made this mistake. So when I left uh, the show, I just got rid of all my 
followers and it's like no no I'm gonna start from scratch I'm gonna start fresh no don't do that don't burn those bridges um because the hard work and the organic reach it starts off with one two three people you know and it keeps spreading if you do good work they'll spread it on you know they'll share it you know you can ask people to share your content I think that helps a lot so yeah I think these days there's a lot of avenues into it but for me personally I wouldn't sell your soul to do it um just create good content and at some point and just keep working hard and at some point someone should notice and if they don't just keep trying because some people their careers start early in their 20s some people start late 30s 40s 50s you know you have these superstars who got their big acting break in their 40s so um we shouldn't be too short-sighted with it perfect wonderful thank you very much for for, for all these insights um we're running out of time but we really don't want to end up the show here but thank you very much um so no delighted to have you uh pray for your uh, strength happiness and success Mom, thank you so much for joining us thank you we'll try to reach you again uh, and reach you out she was uh mom adam with us thank you very much everyone uh for for staying in um wonderful soul wonderful human being she has been working on ptv uh world for almost uh, she she has been working in pakistan for 5 years uh, she was a former host of world this morning um uh, mom adam thank you very much everybody all our episodes are there on youtube channel so you can also check all our episodes over there um thank you very much until uh, next time assalamu alaikum